to know everyone. This is Tina. See you again. Um, finally, we we're gonna have some um, demo, okay? Called the step by step. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna only show you the aware interface to customize uh, some code during the creation stage. Because if I put all the words here, it's gonna be very long. So now let's start. Uh, I already have a project, okay, called a Spring Bean Life Cycle. Uh, if you want to see the source code, you can go to the description to download it, okay. And I have the project ready. In the exit form, I have uh, one dependency is a Spring context with the latest version and uh, the configuration file, Spring configuration file. Uh, I just have the structure here, but I didn't do anything, right? And in the package, nothing. So I'm gonna use the demo we used during our theory part, customer, okay? And in the customer, let's have a one field, okay? And then we have a get a setter. Get a setter and uh, let's make our constructor explicit. Okay. Okay, then here I have uh, some comment here which is a default customer def non argument uh, constructor. Okay. And then next step. In the Spring XML file, I'm gonna define a bin. Okay, I want to have a bin. Okay, here I want to have a bin. ID is cast class is xng .regen .customer. customer. Okay, uh, this is what we done so far. And the next step, we create a main. And the only thing is a new class path XML and here is the spring.xml. So let's see what's gonna happen after I done this. Let's run. See you uh, when when we run this application spring we are using the configuration file to initialize all the beans right to wire all the components together and when spring see it here oh you want to have a bean and by default it will call your customer non-argument constructor okay and the next one suppose i have a constructor here which is for the customer okay so here I will say customer uh, first first name construct. How about that? Uh, not a good name, okay? And then we have to do something when we run. Nothing will change because when we give a bean like this, by default, you're gonna call the non-argument constructor. But now, if I change something, add and uh, name, first name, I give a value, value, Tina. Uh, okay, so here, what we can do is we can get this first name. Okay. And what I change is I add a constructor argument here. And for this case, when Spring trying to initialize a bin for customer for us, it won't use in the default, which is not argument anymore. It's gonna use in the one which has the first name. So let's run. Okay, see here? It's gonna using the uh, our customized constructor instead of default one. And now, if we do like this, okay, uh, sorry, go here. 
Suppose here when we call set system out, uh, set first name. And what we can do is uh, we have uh, something called a uh, property and you can specify first name value is xing okay and when you do that this is gonna go to the second stage which is uh, populate properties okay and it's gonna call our set method to populate the properties let's run See here, this one constructor arguments we are called the constructor, and when you have property here, you are called the set methods. Okay, and uh, this is match our the first two stage. This is what we do theory part, right? Initiate, which is uh, uh, called the constructor, then populate properties. We have done so far. So now let's go through the second steps, which is uh, the using the aware interfaces to have some customized code okay let's go and uh, to do that there's nothing change in the configuration and nothing change in the class uh, in the main the thing you need to change here is you implement bin name aware okay and when you implement bin name aware you will have one method which is set a bin name and uh, here i just uh, do some fake thing okay plus s okay let's see what's the value of the s and you can also change the first name to be something else right you can use in this data set a name to set the first name to be something else okay and uh, there's another one which is uh, bin factory aware Okay. And once you add bin factory aware, you can get the bin factory. Still here, we can implement the set bin factory. The bin factory, what you can do is uh, you can do something since we, uh, we can do is we can check if you can that uh, bin factory dot is uh, you can say it's singleton or it's a type of mismatch or something or it's, uh, it's a singleton like uh, it's a customer this uh, instance is a singleton or not okay you can also have other methods if you want to overwrite okay and the last aware is called application context aware okay after doing that way you still need to implement the method set application context and here you can also get the application context which hold this bin right you can get application context dot get bin or get application name or get id or other things okay uh, oh my god it has so many which one should we choose uh, get a type you can also see here, you can still get a singleton, uh, the, the methods which are available inside the well, inside the, uh, uh, inside the bean factory. Let's use the same one. Uh, let's use it as a prototype, how about that? It's a prototype. We know it's not a prototype, right? Okay, so after we do this piece, the only thing is run it and see the stages. So far, yeah, we have two th the stage. Then you, you are gonna go through all those other stages. Okay. Oh, very good, very good. See here. So after we run, the first thing is uh, go to our constructor, right? Go to our constructor. Oh, uh, this one because we have a c constructor argument there. The second thing is uh, populate the properties, which is using the set method. And since we implemented those aware interface, see here, those are the callbacks. See here, you can have a set bin name, it will give the CUST, which is a name you defined here, CUST, right? And uh, next one is go through the bin factory aware. 
once you see here when we it will call back this uh, city bean factory and uh, here we check if the customer is a singleton or not and we know it's a singleton so it gives the true and also you can using the application context where it will have this callback okay and uh, during the creation stage it will call this callback and from here you can check yes the prototype you can also do other customized code okay suppose here uh, let's do something okay uh, we get the application context uh, context and uh, what we're gonna do is uh, uh, string first name equals context dot get bin right and we can give cost and give a customer dot class and dot get first name then we can say first name plus first name right and uh, when we see now the first name will be xing even though here we uh, here we give here we give tina it's gonna be overrided by this one right We'll see first name is xing but you can also override in other places like you can using this dot first name equals xing in application context okay and let's see that the value eventually returned from the bin right you will see the first name is xing in the application context so this is the first way you can uh, add some custom code during the creation time which you're using those uh, aware interface but uh, this is not a good way because uh, while we do this way our customer uh, this domain model is uh, coupled with uh, spring apis and the Spring actually has a lot of aware interface, but as a Spring programmer, we rarely touch those. Uh, it's good to know they are, we have the choice, but uh, you don't necessarily to use this way if you want to have some customized code during the creation stage, okay? So that's it for the first way to do, to add some custom code in a uh, Spring Bean lifecycle. Um, we're gonna have I'm gonna have several other videos to show you other ways you can choose the way you like okay so that's it thank you for watching this video and see you next time bye bye